<laughs> okay. Uh, after the NRA came in and they cut it, uh, worked down to eight hours. They mm -hmm. speeded up the machines to get That's right. so they'd earn as much. I mean, they'd do as much work in eight hours as did the, mm -hmm. the eleven, twelve. That's right. So the the big organization for about a year and a half to try to keep that down, and mm -hmm. finally there was this big strike. Right, right. And these are some pictures that that were taken around Gastonia. Mm -hmm. These are two women who came down to the union to get uh, some food. And we we know this woman here. But here, this is a big Labor Day parade in downtown Gastonia. Mm -hmm. You might recognize a street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember anything about those big parades? Oh, I heard about them, but we never did go to them. Mm -hmm. No, we never did. Uh, you know, that was just for white folks. <laughs> well, I must say that we look here and I don't see any black folks no, today in that parade, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Belmont. Uh, same thing there. But this was show you how many uh, people were in, involved in this. This was down in uh, Municipal Park, Lineberger Park. Mm -hmm. See all those thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And do you remember anything about this at all? No, that was in Belmont. That was yeah. kind of out of, out of my territory. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what all this is organizing. This is Gastonia? Yeah, this is Gastonia. So that Lineberger Park was Gastonia too? Yeah. You must, have, you must have heard about people organizing into unions though, didn't you? Well, I heard, I heard about them organizing, but uh, we never did go to them. What do you think about them doing that? Well, uh, Tell the truth, you see, we thought that was just for white folks. That's what we thought. So we never did to any. Never were invited, and invited to tell us to come here, we join no union. No, I don't get any of being there. No, I didn't see. Can you understand why they wanted to, to join unions at the time? I never could figure out why they didn't want us to join the union, so. Well, in a way, I did. I got to think about it. We would have been making the same amount they were, and they didn't want that. So we was making seven dollars or something. We can have been making twelve, and that's the only thing I can see. We we would have been making the same thing they were. So they didn't want you in there. Well, we've got a letter from nine black men in South Carolina. I think it is. I have it right here. You okay? In, uh, right in that pile. Right here? Uh-huh. Okay, let's see. Let me find this. Uh, let's see, which one is that here? That's actually from Gastonia, that one. This one, uh-huh. But the one, let's keep on going. Okay. I learned pretty good in school. I, I did pretty good in school. Now this letter was written to Hugh Johnson, who was head of the NRA, mm -hmm. just the day after Bruce Graham wrote his letter. Mm -hmm. So Johnson got, had been on the radio to say, if things aren't right in your, in your place, you write us. Mm -hmm. And so this is from Greensboro, Georgia. It says, Dear Sir, on Tuesday, January the 2nd, seven men were fired from the Mary Leah Cotton Mill of this city. On Friday morning, January the 5th, seven more were fired, making a total of 14. These men have been working at the factory from two to 14 years and were fired without any reason. The factory recently put in new machinery, which of course reduced the number of men. For this moment, 14 colored were working inside, 12 operated machines and two cleaned. We feel that this was unfair as whites were taken from other jobs and put on colored jobs. We will appreciate it if you would send NRA authorities to investigate, signed, 14 colored men. In other words, when they had to pay more, mm -hmm. then they simply substituted whites for, <laughs> for blacks. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's pretty rough. 
Now you understand, I think you've helped us to understand why they didn't sign their names. Mm -hmm. Yes. But somehow Bruce Graham did. Well, Bruce was working for the man that yeah. owned the mill. That's, that's the only, only yeah. difference. That was the only difference. Yeah. He was working for the man that owned the mill. Yeah. In other words, that was his nigga. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I'm telling you this like it is, what, yeah. what, what they say. Yeah. So what did you think, but, so, but when all those people started joining unions like that, did you, did, did, aside from the fact that they didn't ask you to join, did you, what did you think of them going out and risking themselves to join unions? I could hear that. You're putting words in his mouth and I don't like it. You don't want to do that. No. Okay. Okay. I don't think... Well, yes. let me okay. then let's all just right. ask it straight okay. then, George. Right. Okay. What did you think of all the other people joining unions? You mean the black? No, I mean the whites at the time. Oh, uh, yeah, that I think they did the right thing. Because see, if they move up, we would move up. See, eventually we would move up. That's where I see it now. You say you see that way now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back then? Back then I didn't I was kind of afraid of what was the outcome back then, but now I don't. Did you say that your, was it your son who was a machinist? Yeah, he was a master machinist. So he would have been in the machinist union or no? At that time, he, uh, they didn't, he is now. He is now. Yeah, but back at that time, blacks could, didn't have no kind of job like that. Mm -hmm. No more than what I was telling you about, you know, weighing up cotton, bailing waste, and rolling coal. Then <laughs> we, we, we wasn't worried about no union because we were working uh, from 6 to 6. Mm. And we were glad to have a job. And then we was farming too, so we were living. Yeah. Do you know what happened to the, a lot of those people that did join the union? Some of them lost a job. They got around, had some kind of way of making them lose their job, you know. I always had some kind of complaint about them, you know. Said they wasn't performing their job, you know. They had a way to get rid of them. How does your son see the, see the union? Does he see it pretty favorably? Or? Yeah, yeah. He, they, uh, that company, they have uh, they lease a big fishing boat every year, and they, everybody want to go, can go. And the company, the company in Western House pays for the boat. All you got to do is punch your own reel, and some some boats get reels on them. Every year they get to go on, on them fishing trips. Now they uh, got a, uh, all of them that want to learn to play golf, they're getting up a club in the plant to play golf. My son then bought him a set of clubs, and he going to learn to play. Yeah. Still gonna look for some of them old pictures of mine when I was, oh, I guess that's about that tall. <laughs> They're in the house somewhere. Good. And I still got okay. your number, I'll call okay. you.
What's her name? Her name is Margaret. And her last name? Garrett. Garrett. Someone's there. The air conditioner's on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let's try again. Hey, nine. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Garrett? Margaret? Uh-huh. How do you do, ma'am? My name's Judy Helfand. Yeah. This is George Stoney. Hello. How are you doing? All right. Do you know who we are? Well, I thought we, um, we called you a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And we came by and you weren't here, so we thought we'd try again. Um, we had just come from visiting your sister, May. Mm-hmm. May now. Mm-hmm. Um, and your niece, yeah. Louise. Yeah. And, um, and her husband. And we spent some time with them. We're friends with Betty Henson. 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 Uh-huh. Right. And we've been doing some work. And this is our friend Richard Greer. Hi. Okay. And um, George is from Winston-Salem. Mm-hmm. Richard's from Atlanta. And I'm from New York. Okay. I'm the mm-hmm. Yankee in the bunch. <laughs> and we've been working on a project for a long time about mm-hmm. the history of textile workers here in the mm-hmm. South. And we actually found a picture of you. I did. Did you? Yes, ma'am. Well, y'all come in. My mm-hmm. husband, he's in bed Okay. 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 Let me hold my, I ain't nothing, but I guess, okay. Let me, um, let me hold the phone. Okay. Okay, are you on the phone? I will talk to you later. Grandma told me that morning that they said they wouldn't talk to me. And now I'm Oh, uh, thank you. Can you come join us? Oh. Well, yeah. Uh, just sit on the phone. Okay. Sure. Okay. Why do you sit on here? Okay. Okay. I'll tell you, we've been wanting to meet you for a long time. I've been looking, I've been looking to meet you for, uh, let's see, two summers now. Yeah. Yeah, would you believe I have looked at the back of that photograph, and I have looked through all the angles in the phone book and have called every single one of them, at least I thought I did, trying t- to say, do you know this lady? But um, no, one, no one quite knew who you were. And then we were with Betty Hinson and I showed her this picture. And she said, I, I know this woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she brought us to your sister. Yeah. And her sister recognized her and said, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, see, May, she, uh, we looked a lot alike, you know, when, when we were young, and we favored a lot, so they thought at first it was her. Mm-hmm. She thought at first it was her, mm-hmm. but Louise said when she seen it, said she knew who it was. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, um, you know, it, it's really something to see a picture that was taken so many years ago and then be able to find the person <laughs> that's in it. <laughs> so thank you very much. You make me very happy. <laughs> But more important, we wanted to be able to talk to you to find out about that picture because we really haven't been able to meet anybody that can talk about that period of time who was really there, and this is proof that you were really there. Yeah. Maybe George can tell you a little bit about what we've been yes, doing. Yes, well, what we're doing is that we're making a, 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 a film for public television about uh, textiles in the early 30s. Mm-hmm. 
And so, thanks to Judy, who's a wonderful research person, she found all these photographs, including this one. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is going around and talking with people who were represented in these photographs. For example, uh, do you know uh, Ernest Moore? Old, yeah. Well, um, uh, he lives uh, he lives in uh, Belmont, doesn't he? No, Ernest no. Moore lives in East Gastonia. East Gastonia. And he had worked at the Groves Mill. And um, we were able to find Ernest because we found a letter that his daddy had signed, along with 108 other workers mm -hmm. from that period of time, because it was 1933, and they were saying that the mill wasn't paying them the way the mill was supposed to pay them. And they put a petition together, signed all their names on it, and sent it to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. which at the time was a very common practice. A lot of workers, I'm sure you remember, were organizing themselves into, into unions and trying to make their jobs a lot better. Mm -hmm. So we found him through this letter, sort of, actually uh, through an article mm -hmm. that was written in the paper in the Charlotte Observer. And someone called us and said, hey, you know, I was there too, just like Betty Hinson did, and about... I don't know, 40 people from the area called us and said, I was part of that history and I want to tell you my story. But even before this article was written in the Charlotte Observer, I happened to have some of these photographs and I was trying to hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> what we've been doing when we are able to talk with people and sit with them is um, we actually sit and have a, a conversation uh, about that period of time mm -hmm. and try to put people's stories together. And um, generally we do it with a with a video camera because what we're ultimately going to do is have a, tel has a program that will be on public television mm -hmm. about the people like yourself who work in the mills. Yeah. Oh, I don't want my picture made. Mm -hmm. Should we show you the picture mm -hmm. that we found? I'll look at the picture. Okay, here it is. Wow. Well, that's me all right. <laughs> Oh, yes, and that's my oldest son, that's Doug. Yeah, and that's, this year's Lucille Cloninger. Now, she lives right down here in the, let's see, one's in the third house down, Lucille Cloninger. She's still living? Yeah, she lives, she lives right down there. Happy time. Yeah. That was over Jim Peel when we worked at Jim Peel. I wonder if you'd mind if we'd call her and maybe she could come down and be with us. Well, I, I could call her. Okay. Maybe. Or even, you know, we could even walk over there if you'd like. Well, I... I you don't want to leave your husband. Well, I can't go. Uh, I broke my, pan, broke my hip. And oh, I sure, yeah. And okay. I walk with the cane. Okay, and uh, she is in good health? Yeah, she's in fine. Okay, well, so let's see if she'd like well, to come I, over. I believe that's Lucille. It looks like her. I'll tell you, it, it says on the back. Mrs. J.W. Engel, they didn't know you were, they didn't give you a married name, did they? You, no. We, you were a Garrett then, right? Mm -hmm. And it says Mrs. James Cloninger. James. Was that her husband's name, James? James. Rochelle, Rochelle married all. Let's see. Maybe that could be her sister. You were very pretty. Mm. Well, that's me, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody remarks how slim you are. Yeah, I used to be slim, but no more. Oh. <laughs> I, I like your dress. Yeah. I've been admiring it yeah. for two years yeah. now, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I'll tell you. You wouldn't realize, and that's that darn little bald headed dog come on. <laughs> he looks just like you. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a pretty baby. Bald headed. Now, Lucille, she would know who that is. If mm -hmm. Let me call Lucille. Okay, Lucille good. And see okay. If she's at home and All she'll right. Come up here. I'm sorry y'all caught me like that. I guess it's just the way I go around the house. Mm. I think you look just fine, Mrs. Garrett. <laughs>
the people in the comments and I just want all the people that are people to come here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Phone book. It's it's isn't it? Yes. Oscar. <laughs> Thirteen twenty Catawba Street. Yeah, what's the number? Uh eight two five. 5053. You know what? Why don't we do this? Since you couldn't find it, would you like me to write it down for you? Would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. Okay, where do you want me to write it? We do this on camera. We don't like those. What's her name? What should I, how should I call her? Lucille. Lucille. Right That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. I really don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. It looks like her, but... Well, of course, we made the first mistake in thinking this was your sister. But you see now... You um, do look very much like your sister, though. Of course, I don't look like that now. <laughs> I don't look like you. <laughs> you know what? Like you have your, fit, your eyes are the same yes. eyes. Oh, yes, and, yes. Uh, in 74 years, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it hasn't been 74 years since that picture was taken. Oh, no, I was about, let's see, that was just, 
I probably was about, Douglas was born when I was 18, I was about 19 years old. <laughs> I got married pretty young, married <laughs> 17, Douglas was born about when I was just about 18. Uh, when were you born? Douglas, I said Douglas was me. Yeah. I was born uh, 18 and I was born 19 and 18. February the 7th, 1918. That's my dad's birthday. Is it? Yeah. But that's your, Louise said y'all had one me and I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it, but mm -hmm. I tell you, I don't know. Well, that looks like that's, that's not a meal, is it, back there? That looks mm -hmm. like it's at somebody's house, don't it, for sure. Mm -hmm. we used to, but there was a group of us there. But I don't know why me and her was out there in front. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just stopped you as you were leaving. I think that was what happened. They just stopped you as you were leaving. Why is that? Who told I look a sight? Is that why? Because you think you look a sight? Well, do you want an objective opinion? <laughs> yes, you See if I can guess. Come on here and see them. Hey, some people want to see you here. Talk Hello. Hi. Hi. How do you do? All right. They're, they're making up what you, you tell what Lucille you Kloniger? Yeah, yeah. I think I've been looking for you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> for almost, what, almost two years? Uh, um, at least two years. Let's see if this is your name here. This is James Kloniger? No, that's not my name. Uh-huh. I'm Miss Evelyn Kloniger. Uh-huh. Evelyn Lucille. Well, well, tell me who that is, our Lucille, sir. Lord, I don't know. Sure don't know. Well, that's me. Where was it took at? Over to, uh, like I said, it might have been took to Imperial. It was taken <laughs> here, you see. Uh, it was where they were giving out food uh, during the, the strike in 34. Uh, uh, sure, leaving a local strike relief station laden with bundles of food supplied by the textile union, which called a strike. That ain't me. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it sure ain't me. Her face looks familiar, though. I know Margaret. <laughs> but you know that's me. I don't know what I was doing. Well, I never did go get no food. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother did. Mm -hmm. I was just married mm -hmm. then. See, that's Doug. You, were, you remember Doug, don't mm -hmm. you? Oh, uh, let me see that. Do you not recognize anybody? I just went and bought new glasses. Anybody else on that picture? I sure don't. Well, that was during, that was, that was during, during that. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that was uh, 1934. 1930, 1934. Just uh, the summer after Roosevelt got elected. That's when we had that strike over there at Imperial. You know, mm -hmm. we had a strike over there at Imperial. Yeah, my right mother there. was working there then. I wasn't working there then. No. You weren't working? No, I sure wasn't, but I don't recognize none of them but you. Well, I, I it's can't. been a long, long time, <laughs> eight to seven years. I well. can't even remember being there myself. <laughs> but the picture, <laughs> picture's yeah. don't lie to yeah. me. No. <laughs> do, do, do you remember that story? Well, that one sure does lie, because that ain't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, May and Louise thought that was you, but I didn't really think it looked, mm -hmm. it couldn't be mm -hmm. one of your sisters, could it? Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, Mrs. James Kloniger? No, I sure don't. Mm -hmm. Now, I did date a James Kloniger back then, but I don't know who he married. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it could have been that the reporter had the name wrong. Mm -hmm. 
You know, yeah. that's always but possible. I didn't go get no food. Uh -huh. But now, you know, uh, Mama didn't get too much. Mm -hmm. I don't remember going to get uh -huh. food, but mm -hmm. I guess I was there. Did you, you remember, th what did your mother, did your mother tell you about getting food? No, I was 16 then, uh -huh. about maybe going on 17 then. Mm -hmm. Were you working in the mill at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we worked over there at the imperial, worked at the imperial. Well, I had been working, I guess I was about 19, because mm -hmm. uh, I done got married. You was, you must have been up about 19. Because I'm older, a little bit older than you, I, I was. Know. That's just like I was telling him, I got married at 17, Douglas was born when I, I was just about 18. So he's about, looks like he must be about, so I was around 19, I guess. That sure ain't me. I look bad and all that, but that sure ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, look bad? <laughs> well, it don't really, uh, it looks a little bit like you, I mean. But that don't look like me either. Not now. I told him I didn't know how. I got so ugly. And <laughs> so long time ago, it's just been a long time. I don't know none yeah. of them men either. But you had the same brow. The, uh, yes, same that's beautiful. Brow, yes. No. <laughs> yes. So does your son. Yeah, Douglas. He now, my mouth used to be like that before I had my teeth pulled. He ruined mm -hmm. my mouth when mm. he pulled my teeth. He didn't make them right. What's that? Well, I asked him, let me go. My doors is open. <laughs> How many children I had, and I said eight. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we're, we're, you must, you must. She have looks familiar to me. You don't know Nancy Overcash, do you? No, do I look like Nancy Overcash? Yeah, I like her and Dot. My mother raised uh, Nancy from a baby up. She had 11, and then she raised Nancy. They live up Raleigh now. Now, these people are from New York. And he's from Atlanta, and I'm from Winston-Salem. Because we are, we are making a film about textiles in the early 20s and 30s. And uh, this is a part of the story, you see. And we found all these pictures. Uh, let's show you a couple of other pictures you might like to see from. This, uh, these are from uh, Gastonia. Here is a big parade. Well, here's a, a big parade in Gastonia, you see, on Labor Day, mm -hmm. the Monday, the 3rd of September. It's a long time. I didn't know I was living until my baby boy left. That's a long time ago. I bet you knew what work was like, though, in the cotton mill, didn't you? I took this down and showed it to a, a merchant over here the other day. He said, where are all those people now? They don't come down to town <laughs> to the town now. Yes. No, the towns is all, these big shopping centers is I taking all the people. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't. But if it went to hurt me too bad, I guess they take it. Anyway. That's a long time ago. Yeah. We have some movie footage mm -hmm. of this same parade, mm -hmm. and Mr. Uh, Ernest Moore found his father in our footage. Mm -hmm. you recognize him by his big hat. Yes. We also have the uh, interview with the fellow who was the drummer boy just ahead of this. Oh, well, Lucille, I thought you worked at the Imperial. I did. That's why I was saying I worked yeah. there and I was about. I married when I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And I didn't work there. Yeah. But I did go back in later years mm -hmm. when my brother worked there, the R. Yeah. But I never did have my teacher there. Well, that was a good place to work. 
you could take it, it was. <laughs> I love Jamie. Was just, he used to make me so mad. He'd get the end of my spoon and bring my feet just down there and look. I'd try my best not to look at him to see him. <laughs> I was fast for about 20 years ago. Now I think I'm human like everybody else. <laughs> what happened 20 years ago that makes you change? Well, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah. Uh. You know what that is? I do, yes. Strange. And since then, I felt like I'm good as anybody else. I got my faults, but they have too. Uh, that's a great release. Yes. Yeah. Greatest I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was rough back then. We didn't. We sure didn't make much money. I, I made four dollars a week, five days, twelve hours. And my mama took three, and she gave me one of them to clothe myself with. Good Lord. It's been a hard life, but it was that way with everybody. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. My poor old mama worked as hard as I have. She worked in the mill as well? She was uh, a, a, a spooler. Mm -hmm. I was a spinner. One of the great jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Except that you had all that dust in the air. Well, no, it was you put up ends for tin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Set in rope. Twist it together. Mm -hmm. I worked down there for either. I guess I worked down there about, off and on, about 30 years. Hmm. Eagle Mill did it. Did you live on the Eagle? Mm-hmm. We got on there. Most of my kids was born down there. And I had one born over on McCannville. And then we moved back down to the Eagle. My baby was <coughs> down there. We just went to the Eagle Mill Village reunion. Were you there? No. I don't go to them. I've been under Bakke for about two years. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't go much in those years. Well, we had a great time there. There was singing and uh, preaching. And, yeah, yes, yeah. that's right. Over at the Sizzler. Yeah, yeah. My, one of my daughters was there and my middle boy, mm -hmm. Sammy Carnegie and Mary Jane Beach. They went, but I didn't mm -hmm. know the rest of mine go this year. Do you know Wavonia Hill? Ain't she something? She is, She gave us one of the best interviews we've been able to get. We filmed her. She just, oh yes, she was just. You know Vivonia, yeah? Mm -hmm. We filmed with Vivonia. She, she, yes. she was terrific. Yeah. You know, and let me tell you something to be in a condition. Yeah. She's, yeah. She got that way when we went to school. Mm -hmm. We lived side to side. Mm -hmm. Me and her used to play in the playhouse together. Mm -hmm. Out in the edge of the woods mm -hmm. from the house. Yeah. Few woods, it wasn't big. Mm -hmm. Our mamas could always see us off her. <laughs> well, she told us about fighting uh, polio and all of oh, that. No, yeah. But good grief. That girl went on and went, got her schooling and went to college. She's got money to burn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, another thing she has, which may surprise her, right in the middle of the interview, I asked her something. She said, well, I'll have to look it up in my diary. I found out she'd kept a diary from Ooh. 1933 to 1967. And she was about to throw it out, throw them out, because she doesn't have much family, you see. She didn't, she said, it's going to be in the way. I said, you can't do that. This is history. I got her to read yeah, some of the sections. That way. They throw away everything and sold. They don't oh. do nothing and sold. Well, what we did was to immediately notify the Gaston County Museum. And they invited her down there, and we filmed with her as she was presenting her diaries to the museum. <laughs> well, she is just such a. She's wonderful. And she she uh, she told us all about life and the eagle and all of that. Yeah. She didn't tell you about me and her playing the playhouse. <laughs> I don't think she called you. Well, she called you by maybe the first name. I can't remember that. Well, my name middle name's Evelyn, and uh -huh. I never did go get any yeah. free food, and I know that mm -hmm. must not be mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Well, I don't know sure. Can be. I don't know. <laughs> That, what that picture really got this, what, 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 what our story, what we're doing is we're trying to understand not just that picture specifically, but that whole period of time, and in a sense what that picture represents, which it seems to us means people taking care of themselves, or trying to. 
I've got one teacher in me before I'm married. Uh-huh. Mm. And I don't know why I just married him. <laughs> <laughs> I just got back from having my glasses changed. Mm-hmm. I don't give out. I don't know what that great grandson is doing out there at my house. I hope he ain't tearing up nothing. <laughs> Did it help you when you changed your glasses? Yeah. Well, I didn't I didn't have the lens changed. I just had to buy a new oh, lens. Yeah. This arm on them just wouldn't stay fixed. Mm-hmm. I've been over there several yeah. times mm-hmm. having to fix. So I told her just to put in mm-hmm. some more lens. Yeah. I've just reached the point where I get my glasses changed about every year and they still <laughs> I got a pair of sunglasses out there that I had, they fixed for me seven years ago. And when I break these, I put my sunglasses mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And I can see better out of them than I can these. Mm. Well, it seems like the two of you have known each other since you were just little kids. Is that right? <laughs> we want to know how long have we been married? I remember her still. when her grandma led her around by the hand. <laughs> yes, we've been known her for years. We lived at the Eagle yeah. together. Were you living at the Eagle in 1934? No, uh, that was over on Imperial. Imperial. Uh, y'all know back over mm-hmm. there. We've all been over on Imperial. But we didn't stay there long. We left the Imperial and uh, We never did get, get acquainted with one another much. So back then, kids didn't do like they do now. But we, <laughs> they stayed we lived up here on the, the Majestic. Uh, yeah. We worked up there. I worked there 41 years. Up here at the Majestic, right up here in front of East Field. Forty-one years. When did you start working Ooh. in the mill then? You were just a six. I started to work when I was fourteen. Mm-hmm. No, when I was sixteen, I went to work. I learned when I was fourteen. We stayed and over I on them and and we I didn't stay over there the too long. <laughs> well, and like when I went up here, I, the last five years I worked, I loved it better than any any year in my life. Why was that? I don't know. The people were just different. Mm-hmm. Down there at the Eagle, to me, they were terrible. And mm. I don't want to go into that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, t- well yeah. I finally learned why, but, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But we've been traveling all over the South, talking to people just like yourself, um, looking to talk with people that worked in the, who grew up in the mill villages, or who came down from the country and then went into the mills, and who have really given their life over that work and um, well, made a big contribution. That's what we did. We worked. We lived in mills, one mill villages, houses. We paid. We lived in a three room house. They charged us 20 cents a room. That was 60 cents a week. And then we moved in a four room house. It was 80 cents a week. Mm. That's all they charged us for the house. And they'd give us the water and water and power <laughs> free and until they turned. They finally, the town took the water over, and then we had to start paying for our, our water then. But they did, did they give us our light free, or did they take it out of our town? No, I believe they took We burned over 25 watt down there at the Eagle, and they charged us for it. I believe they give us so much, and if yeah. we burn over, well, they would charge us for that. That wasn't much. The rent was a dollar and a quarter for a five room house. Yeah, but it wasn't very much. And when me and Jack remember, first got so married, we lived over on the M girl in a little two room. <laughs> I, I didn't try to help her there the lady. Mm-hmm. But Except you were working. Money, yeah. Well, that seems like that was a lot of people. And I laid my own clothes. But you know, if we'd had to rent it, the house, we couldn't afford it because we didn't make enough money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I only made, uh, I think I made $14 and something for five days. And I Maybe worked there at the M girl. See, you said the difference is she started as a learner, learner, you see, and then, uh-huh. yeah. You know, we've heard about, in the, we, we've collected, I would say, thousands of letters at this point from workers, just like yourselves, who around that time in 33, 34, were writing to Washington, D.C., really complaining because the mill was supposed to work them 40 hours a week and they were on short time or they were being stretched out, and they believed that they had a right to well, get what I, was coming to them. One, I know one time there we wasn't getting but about two days a week. Yeah, I know. About two days. And then a lot of times when I wasn't working, he'd get two days. And I wasn't working then because that was, you know, when Jerome was born. We, Jerome was born, well, Jack, he brought, I think, a doll. I have to get the Bible hmm. down and find out. And 
Wow. Yeah. And you know what? We eat beans, <laughs> beans and potatoes, and, and then potatoes yeah. and beans next day. That's yeah. right. But you know, no, it's we've always had enough to eat. Did all you have a garden? Look at me and see, I've had plenty to eat. <laughs> oh, we've always had plenty to eat. No, too, my husband wasn't a gardener. Mm -hmm. We had one down here till I retired, and then he quit mm -hmm. working it. <laughs> he got mad because I wouldn't go down there and help him. <laughs> but he had been retired about <laughs> seven years when yeah. I you know that what the things that you're telling us both of you are ve they're very important and in fact you probably think it's just your life but <laughs> these historians from all over the south who are very interested in in, in in the contribution of textile workers felt like gee you know we've gotten down the history of management and we got down the history of the steel workers and we got the history of the auto workers but we haven't heard anything from the cotton mill workers well, I, after I learned, I made $12 a week. And that's big money. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So they asked Mr. Stoney, who's from Winston-Salem, and actually... That was 12 hours a day. It wasn't, mm. five, it wasn't mm. eight hours. Mm. It was 12 hours. When did, and then you went on eight hours. Yeah, then uh, Roosevelt brought me in and said, I think he was the one who brought it up. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a good fellow. <laughs> well, do, you remember, do you remember when you first heard about Roosevelt on the radio? No, you? but you know President Bush puts me in mind of Really? I, like him. Mm -hmm. I hope he'll get it back. I think he's more right than the rest of them. I mean, he believes in the right thing. He may mm -hmm. not get all he puts in for because the Democrat Congress is not going to let the Republican mm -hmm. get the more than he can get. I think you listened to Reagan last night, didn't you? No, I didn't get to hear him. I went oh, to bed. Yeah. I go to bed early since I've been sick. Mm -hmm. But that was what he was saying last night. Well, that's, America needs to get back to God. Mm -hmm. They're so far away now, it's pitiful. Mm -hmm. They don't, that's the trouble, well, that's really the trouble. Everything's right to hear them tell it. They, I mean, wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, it's right to them, but it's wrong. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in right and wrong no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pitiful. The next generation, if they don't have somebody to teach them something, it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. Pitiful. You know, it's interesting. That's exactly why they asked Mr. Stoney to make this movie because they felt like the younger generation wasn't learning a lot of the history from the older no, generation. No, they think we're, we're foolish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no, th they just, I don't think they think they're foolish. They just don't know anything about it. Well, now, I raised mine in the church, mm -hmm. and they had the word in the home, but you wouldn't believe it to hear them now. Now, my mm -hmm. baby girl, she's finally come back and started back mm -hmm. to church. But have... But mm -hmm. i got good kids. They're, they're not mean. Mm -hmm. They're just moral, but they don't go to church. Mm -hmm. Have to Have you church. ever talked to them about what it was like uh, when you were young in the mills? Oh, yeah. They, mm -hmm. I got a picture of my family out there when, way before I ever thought mm -hmm. about working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah, I tell them about all these things. Well, you know, that's a, your children are lucky, but mm -hmm. then that's only because you talk to them. Do you know that a lot of older people, they don't talk to their children about what happened in the past because maybe it was hard and they're afraid, well, Sometimes there's bad memories that are connected to all that yeah. hard work, and they don't want to tell them about it. My home was happy. I would have wished my mom and dad had never moved to the cotton mill. Mm -hmm. My daddy loved to farm. Mm -hmm. Him and mama canned. He raised all our meat, just mm -hmm. everything, right from the ground mm -hmm. and the top of the ground. Right. And then we moved to the mill, and he just mm -hmm. lived you, you lived on a farm, too? A lot of people seem to have regretted that move, and again, this is something we like to record because I suspect they've moved because uh, just uh, it was hard to make a living on a farm. Oh, I don't know. My daddy sure kept clean. Mm -hmm. He raised all our meat. He had a smokehouse, and he sure mm -hmm. cured it. We always had fat hens and fryers when time come, and milk, crushed mm -hmm. milk and butter, anything, mm -hmm. vegetables. Mm -hmm. When the berries got ripe, they picked berries and canned them, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. We didn't we didn't have much money now, mm -hmm. but we had plenty of We eat. had plenty of meat, but that's about all. <laughs> I never forget. No cash. Sorry, no, no, way, no, no, way, no, way, no better <laughs> off. <laughs> no cash. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we've been traveling around, actually looking for people like yourself, 
who can talk about this period of time, and specifically the early time when you were on the farm and then the move to the mills, oh. and then you don't like that part, do you? And, <laughs> and specifically around the time that those pictures were taken. Then we went to school well, where all the children was in one big room, all the classes was in one room. This was in the summer, in, in, the, in the country? In the country. School. Yeah. Well, now, I live... All the girls slept in one room and all the boys <laughs> in another. I lived for two years in Yadkin County. You know where that is. Well, who are you? I'm, uh, I come from Winston-Salem. What's your name? Is it George Stoney. No, George Stoney. He's a George Stoney. the professor. That's right, yeah. My yeah. sister, yeah. he's a professor. Yeah. My name's Judy and I Helpen. said, well, if he's a professor, Judy I don't Helpen. want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you don't want to meet a professor? That's right. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I couldn't talk to a professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah I said, yeah, well, folks, Are you going to be babysitting for your great grandson tomorrow? No, ma'am. What are you doing tomorrow? I must have sit out there by myself. My husband sleeps till, say, 12. He gets up, fixes his breakfast, and goes off, comes back at supper time. And I sit out there by myself. Well, and I don't mind. Do you want some company? Yeah. Could we come and? Well, you know what? Yeah. I, you don't even need. You want the menu? You don't even need. Yeah. Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. It's hard to get around. Corn on the cob. No, no, no. But listen. But what? What? You know what would be really great? Maybe you could think about this. It would be really nice to be able to to, to talk to you all a little more about. We came to Gaston County specifically because Gaston County is the city of spindles, right? It has more mills than. And, and well, it, it had more mills in, the, the, in this county, 104 mills in this county at one time. Back then in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And you people are hard to find, I have to tell you. Most of the people that are in those pictures, I'll be very frank with you, they're six feet under. Mm -hmm. well, well, they passed away. away. That's right. And uh, so it's very hard for us to talk to anybody who was specifically there who could really tell us what was going on. Most everybody well, I even rode wouldn't. in the old buggy. My mama used to take us visiting through the day mm -hmm. when she didn't have no way to see somebody. See, we all, all our kin folks down south corn. Well, you know what you should do? You should, we should take you down to the Gaston. Have you seen the new Gaston Museum? No, I've they've, passed our buggy. Do you know they've got a whole uh, department of old buggies and sheds and so forth down there? Really? They're really interesting, yeah. I bet uh, you'll find the buggies. Down in there, in the uh, Boins. Yeah. Where is the Boins? And most of the girls nerd mm -hmm. out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had five five brothers. I got one brother left, mm. and one I had six sisters, five sisters, and I, one of them's gone. Mm. There's uh, six of us left. Mm. My mom and daddy's been gone for years. Well, I've been lucky. I've had. Three sisters, and they're all with us. Well, you're welcome to come out there, but let me go. Cause, yes, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, that so old boy's out there. Okay, so this Kloniger, you have no idea where we could find him. There's a lot of Kloniger. Uh, yeah, they are. They're not related to us. This one boy had eight children, his father, and they're not related to mm -hmm. none of the Kloniger. There's a lot of Kloniger's in Dallas and Gastonia. And there was some at North Belmont now. I don't know if they're still up there or not. It's been a long time it's ago. It's interesting. May you must have known her, huh? Well, it looks like I should have. We're standing right there beside her. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so yeah. many years. Yeah. So I'm sure. yeah. Still yeah. I tell you, I hadn't mm -hmm. kept up with things. Mm -hmm. Just what I, mm -hmm. boy, I married my life since I married has been a hassle. Work. And I love my kids. I took good care of my kids. Eight, eight children? Eight, eight children. children. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, yeah. And three boys. And yeah. Five girls. Yeah, five girls. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when the next time that we see you, what we're really going to want to talk to you about is a lot of things that, that you just been Well, I live about. right out there in 1320. Okay. Next okay. to the last house. Right okay. down in front mm -hmm. of the road yard. She if lives in the third house down there. And I'll show you our picture of us when we okay. were small. <laughs> well, what we'd like to do is maybe we could plan to come down to see her, and you could come down and be with us. Well, maybe I could. Okay. Could we do that tomorrow? 
If it suits Margaret, it suits okay. me. I don't have oh. rain plans, well, but I have got to go see about that little yes, Oh, ma'am. sure. Okay. Well, I you, don't want them to catch you you, you. You've invited us to dinner. What do you want? Uh, that's for, you mean noon, old time dinner. That wouldn't be a steak, would it? No, no, but I mean, at, you, mean at, uh, you mean at 12 o'clock, not at 6, right? Well, if I cook dinner, it'd be at 12 o'clock. Okay, okay, that's what I think. Well, what time do you start cooking, if you're going to cook? Oh, I might start about 10.30. 10.30. Okay. You know what would be fun? Sometimes it's nicer to talk to people while they're cooking than while they're just sitting. <laughs> So can you eat boiled corn on the cob? I can eat corn on the cob. And one other thing I have and I can get a decent around is, is cornbread. Oh, I love cornbread. Okay, could you make me some cabbage. cornbread? Okay, so you know what, can, but can we come around 10.30 and help you cook a little bit? <laughs> I guess. Okay. okay. <laughs> now we'll bring now the... I might not get it cooked Okay, good. We got, we're going to bring the dessert. What do you like oh. for dessert? <laughs> Margaret, you coming out? <laughs> I make them down, you know. Okay, good. I don't know if I can or not, but. Okay. Do you like cabbage? Cabbage, yes. Mm. Okay. What about cube steak? Cube steak, it's all right. Gravy. You sure? Mashed uh -huh. potatoes. Yeah. I see you there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want cornbread with you? Yes, that's right. All of you want cornbread. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, and so one other thing. Us. One other thing, she's buttermilk. She's a buttermilk. I'll bring it. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Okay, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. okay. And if you, if, you, if, you, if you remember that Conagher, I will. You I'll, think about it. But I, I don't believe she's any kin to us. All right. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. She's something else. <laughs> I think I'm going to She's a real good people. Oh, you've got a good neighbor there. Good friend of mine. Uh -huh. I guess. Yeah, well, we've been knowing her well, for a long, practically all of our life. And she was, you know, yeah. So, you were afraid to talk to someone like Mr. Stoney because you thought he was well, a professor? I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> he is but, one. But she's real nice. She just, uh, she's you know. Oh, you, you flatter me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know me, I don't have much of a taste in that when it comes to talking. I just don't really know how to talk. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're supposed to talk. <laughs> you know, but whoever, who made those rules up? <laughs> I think you, I mean. But my sister, she really did enjoy talking to y'all. Mm -hmm. She was so helpful. And, and she's got such a keen memory. And my, she's really nice. My, she's I nice. know. We came in there and Right off the top of her head, just like that. She loves people. She loves to talk. Yeah, she loves to talk. She can remember things way back when a lot better than I can. I don't think so. How old is she? She's in her nineties. That's what she told me, and I, 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 she, she didn't look anything like that. She's ninety-one. Not. No, but she has that. She has that very pink kind of glow. Yes, yeah, she's. Isn't, um, isn't that interesting? She is. She just. Uh, and she's that way all the time. And she loves to go. She loves to get out and go meet people. Of course, she can't get around all that good. But mm -hmm. you know, Louise and some, and they're great mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. They take her and. I really appreciate Louise taking on, taking care of her like she does. She really takes good care of her. No, I gather they move there especially with that yeah. in mind. They yeah. move there because, you know, they just walk, you know, don't have to go to church. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. They did live in a two-story house and they mm -hmm. sold it and moved in this one. Have you been over there recently? I haven't been over there. Like, not since they moved, I haven't. Oh. See, I fell and broke my hip. Oh. Yeah. Because their, their garden is just beautiful. That, you know, that little garden in front? It's oh. just full of flowers. Yes, Louise works in those flowers. Mm -hmm. Well, I sure love to have one of those. Well, I will get you one. We can't do it until we get back, but, yeah. we'll, but we'll certainly be able to get one to you. Ah. Well, I'm glad I do. Mm. It 
You know, I bet if we sat and talked about this period of time a little bit, you start to remember a lot of things. That's what seems to happen to most of the people that we talk with, you know. But I can't, it looks like that could be the reason I went to him. It's my bad. Maybe I went with this, maybe this lady, maybe I went with him. Well, no, they think that was. They, they tell me that that was a store that the union used to have meetings in. Mm-hmm. And that they also, the, the meeting hall was also a place where they brought food and they gave it out to the striking workers. Mm-hmm. Well, we, were, we weren't on strike when we worked there, Joe. And, uh, we, uh, and when it was over, they said, oh, they were so happy. They said, we won, we won, but I don't know what we won. <laughs> we knew it wasn't even a bit better. There and it was. Yeah. That again is important for us to hear because that's contradictory and we need to get somebody who experienced it just exactly as you said it that. And uh, my sister and her husband lived up here on the, the, the <coughs> Chronicle and he, oh, he got into that, uh, that strike and the re- union, oh, he was in, in it so big and you know, after it was all over and they said they won. Well, they didn't win anything, and you know, they fired him. <laughs> they laid him off. What was his name? Fred Airwood. Of course, they're, they passed away. They're not living now. Airwood. A-Y-E-R-W-O-O-D. Airwood. And what mill did they work at? They worked up there at the Chronicle. Oh, that's been years ago. That's the mill up above. Yeah. On the I wonder, do we have him on the yeah, file? I think so. So you worked at... They worked at the Chronicle, and you worked at, at this time, you were working at the Imperial? Uh, oh, I don't think I was working back then. I was, I don't know if I ever worked. See, back. she just, she just had a child. Uh, yeah, I was working there, but when my b- sister and uh, Fred did the work there, I don't think I was, I don't believe I had went to work yet. Yeah, I believe I did learn over there when I uh, and anyway, I remember they, and they didn't normally, uh, uh, they fired him, and not only that, they, I don't know, they done, and when nobody else fired him, they kind of, I don't know what you call him, maybe mm-hmm. blackballed him or something, but he couldn't hardly get a job nowhere from mm-hmm. here on, because he took such a, he just took such an interest in that, you know, and and then they didn't win nothing after all. Uh, what had uh, what had he done before? He was working there in the mill. He, uh, Do you remember what his job was? I sure hope it was uh, the, uh, I don't know much more than I remember him in. It seemed like he was running quickly. Mm-hmm. But I, I was a spinner myself. I, like Lucille down here. Mm-hmm. And uh, my husband, he ran Twister. Was your husband working at that time? Yeah, he worked for the Bank Union for a while, yeah. Mm. We didn't stay there so awful long. Maybe we stayed there maybe about five or six years. And it just got so bad so we just quit and left. And we went and worked a while up, the, up here at the Majestic. And then we left the Majestic and worked, uh, I worked there at, uh, I think it was Harper's Combat for a while. My husband went to the Army and then we moved up, went up to North Belmont and worked while he was in the service. He stayed, he didn't stay long though, his nerve was bad and he got out and then we come back to the, up here at the Majestic and that's where we stayed till he retired. He said 41 years. 41 years. As a spinner? Mm-hmm. Wow. Ah. Does she have the knot? The, the, you know, do, do, are your fingers showing? No, her fingers are beautiful. <laughs> and uh, we stayed up, they sold the houses, and then we, mm-hmm. we moved down here. We've been living here about, mm-hmm. 15, about 15 years. But they sold, well, they didn't sell them. They tore them down. They just, oh. uh-huh. they just well, they, I guess they just got tired of keeping them up, you know, and they just tore them down. But it was, you know, it was all right. It was good times, and then it was bad times. If the work run good, we had a real good job. And if it run bad, we had a real <laughs> bad job. 
because you know sometimes they couldn't run the job hard at all. But I know I retired. I retired at 65 and they called me up in the office for me to say, we want you to work for us, you know, part time when we need you. I said, no, I wasn't gonna, <laughs> I wasn't gonna work no more. I said, I'm retired and I want to retire. I didn't go back. Did they have any pension plan for you? Well, we got in, we finally started it, but we wasn't in it long enough to, you know, amount to nothing. Mm -hmm. They didn't start that till I think I was in about 10 years. Mm -hmm. They didn't amount to nothing. But if, if they had started that when we first moved there, they we would have a good pension. But we just, just didn't. But my Jack's sister now, she, she said she worked. She went to work when I think she was about, Leela, she, I think she was about 80, 81. Now she went to work when she was uh, 14 and she worked till she was about, she retired and I think she worked about 10 years after she retired. Hmm. Yeah, she was there. What age? She lives right up here on the, on the Challenge Street. Was she working at the same mill that you were at the yeah. same time? Yeah, she worked at the, she worked over at the Climax, uh, no, at the Sterling a long time, and then she, she come up here to the, uh, up here to Endure, I mean, at the Tower Fields, where we worked. And that's where she worked at when she retired. How's her memory? Mm. How's her memory? Oh, pretty good. Her and her sister. I don't know if they would want to talk to you. I don't know. Well, I just, I can't, I can't tell you how amazing it is to sit and talk to you after having looked at your picture for so many months. How can I talk to you? I kept on thinking, I know that little boy is around, and I, she's too <laughs> young to not be around. I know she's around, too. <coughs> Douglas, he's so. Uh, Douglas, he's 55. And that's my oldest of my child. Where is he? He lives in uh, Matthews. No. Monroe. He lives over there in the. Uh, it's over on the other side of Charlotte. In uh, Matthews. I don't know where. He still lives out in the country. They call it the. Uh, Snorwood. Norwood on down next to uh, Monroe, I think is where he's at. What's he doing now? He works uh, He works over here in Charlotte at Rexham. They never did work in the cotton mill, mm -hmm. my children, Douglas, he, well now my daughter, she lives in Shelby, she, she works in a dyeing plant, she winds. But my oldest son, he, my young, my next uh, oldest son, he, he passed away. He, mm. He had a massive heart attack oh. and died just the other night. Mm. Yeah. This is my son oh. coming. Yeah. Careful, that. Okay. Come sit down. Sure. Mm. Uh, my son James. James is mm -hmm. the one who's been running the camera <laughs> while we've been interviewing people. So he's I'm met. Picking five. <laughs> so he's met the Eagle Mill Village people mm. and lives in Waivani Hill and Betty Hinson and. Uh, Everybody. Clyde Dietz from Woodrow Wright and uh, uh, um, Ernest. No, the, 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 the uh, I'm thinking of people around here. Uh, Do you know Rosemary Murphy? Used to be a Rosemary King. She worked at Acme. The Michaels, of course. The oh, Michaels family. Harvey Michaels. Yes, I remember mm -hmm. Harvey. Yes. They, they were, they're from uh, Harvey Michaels who turned Eagle. He took us over the Eagle Mills the other day, mm -hmm. uh, over the, uh, the, the village, mm -hmm. and we came on a little raccoon, followed us right out there. Mm -hmm. some, some girl's pet was out for a walk, yeah. and I was but just he, like looking through, and all of a sudden this little raccoon just walks up, <laughs> and he just, he wouldn't leave. And then when he gets that little girl, they were, he, what, you guys mm -hmm. pick it up or let it follow you? Well, he's and followed us, And this little girl yeah. comes up and says, what you doing with my coon? <laughs> 
And it, she just looks like it <laughs> runs up, runs up her front, and just hangs on her shoulder like this. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'll tell you. You might think that you look a sight, but I think you look beautiful. And I can I, I understand everything you're <laughs> saying, and it's really nice and simple and clear, and which is all that. That's the best way to talk. <laughs> well, thank you. Which is really mm -hmm. sometimes hard for professors because sometimes they read so much <laughs> that they forget how to just be simple and clear. Well, there's no lead, lead us trying to be nothing but one eye. <laughs> well, then there is. See, now, yeah. if we could take that attitude with the whole world, I don't think we would have any problems. <laughs> I think the problem is mm -hmm. everybody trying to be something they're not. Because I look like I am. That's mm -hmm. all I can mm -hmm. do. Sometimes my son, now he went to the school, he went to college and everything. Sometimes I'll be talking and say, Mom, that's not what the way, yeah. that's not the way you pronounce it. Well, I look like I am. I just went to the sixth grade in the school. I ain't got too far. Yeah. Um, our friend over here, Rich, he's, um, he works for a newspaper in Atlanta. And he heard about what we're doing, you know, trying to talk to people who had, who had worked in the mills and had participated in, um, you know, maybe this, this, the, the big union movement at the time. He came all the way over here from Atlanta because he thought it was so interesting that we were able to locate people who, who'd, who'd maybe never really been, you know, pieced together in their communities or put this experience together since uh, back then, 58 years ago. So he came all the way over here from Atlanta to, to spend the day with us. So, and we had told him that we thought that, that we had heard that we knew where you lived and that we were trying to get in touch with you. And so we invited him to come with us because he said, gee, if you can meet that lady, well, I want to be there when you do it. I bet you. Yeah. Well, I was afraid. One of the truth, I was afraid if we called first, then, then maybe when we got here, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> so I just mm -hmm. had to take my chances. Well, I'm ready to come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as he was really wanting me to be, she always would be sick of over there. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll tell her. Okay. I'm going to confirm that I ain't going to be enjoying yeah. talking to y'all. Yeah, we've been, I've been talking to him on the phone a little bit once a week since, mm -hmm. since we met them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a good conversation every single time. <laughs> well, Louise used to talk with too. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I guess she's, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? It's right home on mm -hmm. always used to talk with you. I never really had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was up there. <laughs> 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 I can't remember being there. So. Yeah. Well, maybe you can't remember this day specifically, but I bet mm -hmm. you remember that period of time. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. How? Where'd you go without leaving? I guess. I, I, I can't remember those going, but I'm sure. I had, I'd got me something because I had it in my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I bet Jack wouldn't go along with me, and I guess I went along with this lady. I wish I could look down and see it, but well, you she know. could not even be living, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Two out of three isn't bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but that yeah. little jug, all right, I bet he loves a free bag. Well, we'll get, you, we'll get a copy of it. Uh, <coughs> we, we tried to get a Xerox for, for your sister. And it just didn't turn out right, so I realized we have to make a, a real photocopy, and that takes uh, that takes time. We have to go back to, and to go to the lab for that. But I had a did we we had a Xerox right copy, here. you see, and it's just not good, <coughs> you see. So we'll we we'll, we can do better than that. We'll get you a copy that looks very much like this. Well, it's just something to have, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, how would you feel? Can we talk with you again about this? How would you feel about that? You could join us tomorrow when we well, come I, to lunch. Maybe I can come down a little bit. Okay, good. Well, okay, before we could come here, 
you know, and make it easy for you. Then you don't have to walk all the way over there. Well, I don't mind just having it. I just come down a little bit for two. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'd be yeah, great. Sure. Great. Okay. And if I can find any pictures, I'll... Oh, if we can find any pictures yeah. of that period, it would be wonderful. Any old pictures. Now, what we'll do is we'll look at them, but we won't take them. Judy will come back later with a copy stand, and we can copy them right here so, you, you know, there's no danger of the getting lost in the mail or anything like that. See, I'm going to come back and, and have it in, in September, October, and I'll spend about four weeks in, um, in North Carolina or whatever, and I'll be going from house mm -hmm. to house and just mm -hmm. talking to this and this. Yeah. So what we can do then is make other copies of your photographs too. You'll have your original plus an extra. Yeah. Yeah. And when I come back, I'll bring, you, I'll bring you a couple of these things to give one to Doug and maybe some of your children. Okay. Well, I think what I can do is... Okay, good. Okay, good. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, years. about no. almost the, around three years. Yes. I don't know. It's not, yeah, almost three years. And George has been working on this for four, eight, five years. No, no. Four, four years. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know. But it, it takes a long time to piece all these stories together. Yes, it does. I'm sure it does. A lot of work to it, even. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the thing that Rich has been most interested in is the fact that a lot of people haven't talked about this period of time until we came down here with all these photographs and started hunting all these people up. What do you think about that? I don't know it was us back then. I know we didn't. We've seen them many a time. We didn't have a dime in our pocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd work and we'd have to, mm -hmm. you know, buy what we could and then we wouldn't have no money for one week to the next. But we just, like I said, we lived in the mill house, you know. We had a place to live, but we just didn't make all that much money. Is that something that you don't really talk much about anymore, seeing that it's that, that far in the past? Or? Sometimes we think about it, but it don't make us feel all that good. <laughs> when we think mm. about it, I know we went to church. We came from a church. I was back to school when we got married. We didn't go to church. And we stayed with the this one man, he he was praying that the, somebody could give the preacher, could bring the preacher a sack of flour. And he said, the Lord spoke to him, and he said, he's no more able to bring him a sack of flour than you are. And he said, he got up off his knees and went and brought the flour and took it to the preacher. That's <laughs> 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 a great story. preacher, you know, he worked, he used to have to work, too. Though. Worked in a mill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's just the way it was. Yeah. So it was what the 1960s that you stopped working at the mill. Is that? Mm -hmm. I worked. Well, let's let's see. When did we start? I worked. I went in. I worked in the town. I was there when I was 65, and I'm 74 now. Well, I came in from 75. Mm -hmm. My husband, he worked. My husband, he's been there seven, eight years now. And he worked, he retired, but he worked home part time because he retired before I did, and he worked on till part time till I retired. He worked four hours a day, they don't work till I come in. When did you leave the, the mill village? We worked up, we left. They tore the houses down. They, we was living up here. We had to move. We moved down here before we retired because they tore the houses down. So that wasn't that long ago. No, it was. I was about ten, maybe about eleven or something. We were there. And water canals on the farmhouse. They sold our house. We 
I live is I give them to the to the men, to the preacher, you know, and, the, and all they have to do is just leave them mm-hmm. by them from going and have to have to leave. But now when they tore down this the mill village you lived in, we the, had to move. The mill still owned the houses. Mm-hmm. Okay. They just I reckon we just got tired of taking them up, you know, and same thing. We just yeah. you know there's a lot of two keeping houses. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go to mill village, mm-hmm. and this and that, and moving in, moving in and moving out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they tear them up and they have to refix them. And I guess they just got tired of them. They just in some places yeah. they sold them to the to the, to to the workers. Yeah. I'm gonna go okay. The, uh, okay. Vehicle. Fine. And many of the and for many of the people that was their pension. Right. They bought the house cheap. And then they could live in the house, and with Social Security, they could make it. Mm-hmm. So, for a lot of people, that was a legacy that they got. They didn't get any pension from the mill, you see, but they they got a cheap house. Well, we bought this house and we moved in here. It's not all that much, but it's it's good enough for us. This was never a mill house, was yeah, it? This is a mill house. It's been fixed up. Right? Really, I didn't realize that. Yeah, this was a mill house. This is Mill Village down here, and they sold their house. But they they moved this house over here, and they I think it was a three room house, and they they built more onto it. So when we had to move, we just we bought this house down here, and uh, I'm glad we did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, with what, what rents are today? It's terrible. Yeah. It's, uh, hmm. You keep on looking at that picture. <laughs> <laughs> you look about as, as amazed as I am. <laughs> well, I'm amazed at it. Oh, here's your phone. Oh, here's your phone. That must be Douglas. Mm-hmm. Let me take a guess. Is this Douglas? Yeah, that's Douglas. He's still bald. Yeah, he's bald headed. He took after my daddy. That's just, these are my children. That's my oldest son. Hello. (laughs) Hello. That's my husband. I'm George Stoney. How do you do? I'm sorry, did we disturbed you? Did you help him? Yeah, I believe you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's my oldest son, and this is my youngest son, and that's mm. my daughter, and that's my husband. Huh. Yeah. Well, Douglas hasn't changed a bit. Yeah. <laughs> when was this taken? Well, that's, that's been took, well, several years now. It was took when we lived down here. Well, you have a beautiful family. It looks like you've been married a really long time. Well, this is our anniversary picture one now. We had our 50th anniversary. Oh, that's a nice one. The big yeah. cake. Yeah, well, yeah. Our daughter in law baked that cake for uh-huh. us. Douglas's wife. Yeah. Isn't that fancy? Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. I like your suit, too. <laughs> Yeah. My husband, he, he just won't, won't come by much. Yeah. I'm sorry we woke him up. And here Douglas is. When he, but it's just like this one <laughs> he took after. He took after. That's Douglas. Mm-hmm. He's a beautiful looking man. He took after my side of the people. My daddy, he was from bald headed and all <laughs> I don't want Jack to see that picture, but I bet he's too tall. Well, I know that uh, when my uh, my father was bald, 
And he said, son, I'll give you a bit of advice. Don't ever spend any money on your head trying to get it to grow hair, because you'll waste it. All your, all your known uh, ancestors are bald. What do you think, uh, what do you, what do you think, was, was Jack was working at the time when this was taken, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, but he wasn't there. I believe he went on there. He could talk with you if he would, but I doubt he would. Well, we woke him up. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a, this was a, this was a very, uh, Intense couple of weeks, <laughs> wasn't it? This is nine twenty thirty four. That strike was on about three weeks already at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, they, we had they had that strike. We we picketed the the mill in front of the mill. We'd go out there and we'd sit in cars and picketed the mill. That's what we called it. <laughs> <laughs> and after the guy, after it was over, we said we won. But what did we win? <laughs> we mm. went right back to work. Didn't win a thing. What I mean, it wasn't no better. Mm. So you went out there, you were, you were, you and were we didn't. I never was for no no union, you know. But I was young, and I just wrong with the rest of them. Hmm. But I never was too much for union. I just I don't know. Was it? It was your brother. Was it strong? Was it? It was my uh, brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. He yeah. was the one. Was oh, he was really into that mm -hmm. union, and he was for it, and. And then, you know, when it was over, they didn't get the union. Mm -hmm. And the mill, the head mill, you know, the head men, they just got it in for Fred, and they, they, uh, they fired him. Now, he's, he's... Well, he's passed away. They mm -hmm. moved, my sister and him, they moved to California, and they passed away while they were out there. He was, so uh, they, uh... Her, her two children went out there first. They were out there in college going to, to Bible school. Mm -hmm. So Freddie went out there, and then, and then my sister finally hmm. went and took the rest of the children. That's where they were at when they passed away. Uh, what happened to Fred after he uh, got fired? Well, he, he finally did there for a good while. He couldn't get a job nowhere. They just wouldn't, you know. When nobody hired him around because they didn't, you know, that got around, mm -hmm. you know, and you know how things get around him. So he, but he finally did manage to get him a job after so long a time. But my sister, she worked and kept the family up and everything. Did he get a job in the mill? Yeah. The same mill? No, not the same mill. Mm. Uh -uh. Mm. They moved from there. They, uh, they wouldn't hire him back there anymore. And the mill that he was working at at the time was the Chronicle? Mm -hmm. And you worked at the Imperial? Yeah, I worked at the Imperial. At where, this time. Where did your brother work after that? My brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, your brother in law. Uh, in the area local. Like for like three I see. Days. Well, he worked around at different mills. He different mills, huh? He didn't move places. into one village then? No, I don't. I see. No, I really think they, they moved off. I think they had to win them a house and they moved off in it. And mm -hmm. uh, they, but Fred, he finally did get him a job after so long a time, but they really had him like balls mm -hmm. up for a while. Mm. They just were not hard. Yeah, enough. that happened to a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they just got it in for him, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was. Mm. Of course, of course, that's the way it was back, you know, back, way back then. We, we probably, you know, we just didn't get into it with nobody because we didn't want to lose our job. Because we lost our job, we afraid we couldn't get another mm -hmm. one. And we just had to take whatever, you know, come along and uh, do you, what they said do. You're talking about after this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks like there were plenty of people that were, that were for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but they was, we, it's just like I said, we picketed the, 
front of the bill to keep people from going in, you know, but it didn't last long. I don't think the strike lasted long. About three weeks, I think. Yeah. And I don't really, it didn't do us no mm -hmm. good. <laughs> what did you do on the picket line? We just stood out there and stand around. Did you bring the baby? No, I don't really think so. I must have somebody to tend to him. <laughs> Now, some people tell us about singing and praying in the picket line. Yeah, that's right. Do you recall singing? Yeah, yeah, we sang. But we, we had a time, though, but just like I said, we never did go hungry, though. We had plenty to eat, mm -hmm. you know, such as it was. We had plenty mm -hmm. to eat and all, but we just, you know, we just didn't have the money to buy what we really needed. Mm -hmm. Um, what happened to the people from your mill who joined the union? Well, I think we all went back to work, you know, after the union was over. I don't really think they played, played any of them all. Well, as I can remember, I don't think we did. So you got to go back? Mm-hmm. And Jack? Yeah. Do you remember? But I really, let's see. I don't know if Jack was working over there then or not. Yeah, I guess he hmm. was at that time. Hmm. Hmm. I know my sister and her husband was, May and her husband mm -hmm. was working there. And, uh, you know, that could have been four ways ever married, though, besides, since I got to thinking about it. It was th uh, 34. 34. And you had a baby who was about two years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you must have been married. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was married <laughs> then, but I said, just since I got mm -hmm. the blanket about it. Oh, yes, that. yes, yeah. Uh -huh. But I'm like sure that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just has a child. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember how old I was back then, mm -hmm. but that was me, all right. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. That's the only baby I had then. She won. Okay, she won. little purse she is. Mm. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to y'all. Oh, it's it been very pleasant. So and don't hold over. it against professors. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been nice. That's it's been nice mm -hmm. talking to yeah. you. But you know, say professor, who may, may said it's a professor and his son, and they just said they got another lady with them and another man, and say he's a professor. I said, well, if he's a professor, I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you know what? You got to change your card. I know, okay. <laughs> no, I got to change my face. <laughs> but really, you really are nice, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> way you see anybody like me with such a little bit of education. So, you know, I thought, well, I could talk to them. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, listen, if, I hope you believe me, honestly, when I tell you sincerely that you know how to talk. Well, thank you. <laughs> I try to do the best I can. <laughs> well, you don't have to try very hard. <laughs> you just do what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're happy here now. Mm -hmm. Just me and my husband, our children's all married. And we're happy. We go to church. We go to church, East Belmont Church of God mm -hmm. over here, Belmont. Well, we've been going ever since we've been married. They had been a few times that we, you know, just quit going, mm -hmm. but we've always went back. Are there members of that congregation who would remember this time? Well, know for sure it's just like just like she said uh, a lot of the people that grew up when we did they've already passed mm -hmm. away you know my not everybody that we worked with up here at the majestic my husband worked in the in the twist room every one of the men he worked with are passed away mm. all of them are and most of the ones that worked with me in the spinning room that's the me and lucille I'll, lucille of course, she didn't work up here. She worked at Eagle, but she finally come to work up here. And uh, she's, uh, 
It's me and her, I think, and, and Leela and her sister. Now, Leela's 81, and her sister is, is over 80 soon. Now, if she would talk to y'all, I tell you, I'll find out if they'll talk with you, and if they okay. will, well, I'll let you know. But Good. Uh, Maybe they could even come over tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, Leela, she's not in too good a health. She has heart trouble, and she can't go around, you know, too well. Let's, let's leave us on uh, her, our number. Okay. You know what? Can we buy this paper, sir? <sighs> but, you know, the only reason that we even can come to anybody is because you were open enough to have your picture taken <laughs> back then with that photographer. So you <laughs> must have liked having your picture taken at one yeah, point I because you're did. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I can't remember why I was stuck out mm -hmm. there in the very front. front. Mm -hmm. I wanted to well be seen, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I'll ask them and see if they'll talk with you. Okay, me. good. I, mean, I don't know for sure, but if okay. they will, I'll let, let you know. We're staying at the Days Inn in Gastonia. How much longer y'all gonna be around here? For about another week. This is the card that frightened you, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you don't frighten me quite so much, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I've enjoyed talking to you. Oh, I've enjoyed it. If I could remember some things, I could tell you, but I just don't remember things all that well. It's, It'll come, it's interesting. I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm older than you are. I'm 76. You are. And I know how it is. I get stuck on something, and then when things, for example, I was just, uh, yesterday I was back in my hometown, Winston-Salem, and it's interesting, just driving down the street, things came, started coming back to I me. Know. Oh, that's the below home. Then a whole series of memories came in. Oh, that's the coffee pot. A whole series of memories came in. That's what happens. Well, I was born in Clover, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a smaller place. Mm -hmm. there, but I love to go down there and just drive through that mm -hmm. place. Yeah. That's where I was born in. Well, certain things, though, are sad. The place I grew up in is a parking lot. Well. You know, they just tore down the house. And my husband, he was born in Man in South mm -hmm. Carolina. They lived on the farm, but mm -hmm. when he was nine years old, they moved up here to, they moved to the mountains first. Mm -hmm. They got him a job up there, they didn't like it, so they moved, over, moved down to Belmont here. Moved around several different places, mm -hmm. they found it, finally wound up over back to Sterling, and they mm -hmm. stayed there for years. Mm -hmm. so his family did. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, when you drive by the, uh, the Imperial, how do you feel when you drive by the Imperial? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we lived over on the Imperial a good while. In fact, my sister and them lived over there a long time. And when I was just a small child, we'd go, you know. Now, my mother and my brother later lived at Clover, and I never did like Clover. I liked Belmont. So I stayed, my sister more than stayed at home, mm -hmm. and she lived on the Imperial. Well, here comes her husband. And I really liked it, but I don't know. Jack, you want to talk to these people a little bit? I ain't got nothing to talk about. I got <laughs> too much work to do. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got nothing to buy. Nothing to buy. We're not selling anything, <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, he's work. Yeah. Okay. He's been down in his back. He's been having to go to a chiropractor this week every day. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're touching your shoulder in solidarity, <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hurts. Well, th you've been very nice. Thank well, you. Well, it's nice talking okay. to you all. I always try to talk to people if uh -huh. I can. Yeah. I don't just to talk to anybody mm -hmm. down yeah. completely. Well, thank you very much. And uh, if it's possible, we'd like to talk to you again tomorrow. Okay? Well, if I can, I'll come down very Good. Okay. okay.
All right, well, I'll knock on your door anyway, okay? Thanks. All right. And um, let me think about it. You know, maybe we can, we can, we can, we can record a little bit of this story. Maybe you'd feel more comfortable if you if you knew we were coming and you could choose what you wanted to wear and you wouldn't feel like we were well, sneaking. Well, I guess I better not have you come here because he. No, I think it would be better okay, to we'll done do that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. No, that'd no. be great. Yeah. That'd be great. I'm just saying that then you could feel like you chose what you wanted to wear and we weren't surprising you or anything. Okay. That's what you were concerned about, right? <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Sure. Of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's so good I can. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, the, the, the whole uh, experience, once again, of her brother. Uh, what, I mean, her brother-in-law. What happened to her brother-in-law, and how's that's, how that is obviously impacted on what she wants to remember. Yeah. See, it, it, how interesting what she remembered about. And, and that the way she said, they was, we won, we won, but what did we win? Yeah. Now, that's what Gorman said we won, and then everybody. And we haven't yet found anybody who said it quite as simply as that. I mean, that we could just cut right in after Gordon. Mm -hmm. We have Gorman saying that. You see, then we won, we won. It's a great effort. <laughs> just that was great. Yeah. See, that's a hurt. See, they thought they'd won because Roosevelt said, you can go back and it won't be held against you. And I haven't found three. No, I don't think we found two people who are sophisticated enough to realize that they were were let down by Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. The Roosevelt didn't have the agreement of the text of the owners when he said that. Yeah. I think he thought he did because he uh, hobnobbed with all these magnates you see down at Warm Springs, and the Callaways helped to build the place, and the and the Combers would come over, and they'd be on these big dinners with the, the president, you see, and they were. And, and he saw the mill villages, and he saw what the recreation places they built for the workers. And so, I think he was hoodwinked. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, that as a result of this, he supported the Wagner Act very strongly. They got passed the next year. So that was one of the results of almost the only victory I can see in the strike was that we did finally get the Wagner Act passed, which he had not pushed before. He realizes that whatever the, the magnates might say, yeah. they were eventually going to not support the people's right to, to a union. No, that's a very important statement. Okay. Well, we found